Hey guys, my name is John Hammond. Welcome back to a little bit more Pico CTF 2018 video write-ups. So this challenge is called Caesar Cipher 1. The challenge prompt here is, this is one of the older ciphers in the books. Can you decrypt this message? You can find the cipher text at this location on the shell server. And I've downloaded this file already. Let's move into that directory that I've created for it. We can check out the cipher text. It has Pico CTF, like the flag format we would expect, but the inside of the flag is kind of gibberish. So what I'm going to do is actually cut this up. Let's just get that uh, first portion here, and then I am just going to cut the other portion of it out, because I don't care what it is. And then I'm going to go ahead and try and loop this through a Caesar cipher. And you could do this with an online tool if you really wanted to, just find like that decode.fr website or whatever that could, that could break and crack this. But I'm going to try and do it from the command line, because I think that's cool, right? So I'm going to pipe this into Caesar attack, I guess, whatever number I want. And Caesar, again, is a, is a utility that's installed with pseudo apt installed BSD games with ROT13. I've showed that a little bit ago. Uh, if Let's just say I want to use 2 or 3 or 4 or whatever. Um, so if I were to just loop through all of those, I can do at the very beginning of the line for I in and in bash syntax, you use curly braces to denote and then one dot dot to say a range. And I'm going to go to 26. So let's have a semicolon there to start kind of the code block with do. And then I'll use Caesar dollar sign I. So I have a bash variable that will expand to whatever iteration I'm currently looking at. And then a uh, semicolon to denote the end of that command or the end of the, yeah, that, that line in the code block. And then we'll make that code block finish with the done block there. So I'll hit enter and we got all of these lines pumped out. And you can see, blah, 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 a little bit of English right here. It says, just a good old Caesar cipher. Oh, boy, oh, geez. Okay. <laughs> and that is what our flag's going to be. So let's just take note of that. Let's just say flag.text, pico ctf, and I'll paste that in. You could probably detect this however you wanted to in, in, in that, but that's a simple way to just kind of get all the solutions. So let's go ahead and submit this, right? Submit. Awesome. All right, next challenge is called Environ. It says, sometimes you have to configure environment variables before executing a program. Can you find the flag we've hidden in an environment variable on the shell server? Yes. Let's go check out the shell server. I click open this link over here. See how my internet fares. Let's log in here. John Hammond, YouTube. Enter my password. My password is password with like all capital ASS. <laughs> Alright, let's change directory. Do I need to change? No, no, I just need to get the environment variables. So, a cool command that you can actually just use to list all the environment variables is simply env. And you'll notice, as we kind of take a look through this, we have mail, path, these things all kind of set up. And there's pico ctf flag set to a nice try, keep looking. But if we just kind of scroll up, you'll see secret flag equals pico ctf environment variable flag. So since env will literally just display all of it, it's not too hard. We could script this if we were to automate our SSH connection. Maybe we'll do that later. But in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and submit this flag. Let's kind of jot that down, though. We can move our Caesar cipher one to be marked complete. And then we'll just keep track of our environment flag. just for good habits, you know? Next challenge is called Hertz. It says, here's another simple cipher for you where we make a bunch of substitutions. Can you decry decrypt it? And it gives us a netcat connection that we can connect to. So let's make directory Hertz. Get in there. Hertz. 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 What the heck? Okay, cool. Whatever. Tab autocomplete was not having my my day right now. <laughs> Netcat, connect, it's all this crap, where there's... The, the text seem, is seemingly different each time, um, but it should still, I don't know, potentially give us a flag if we wanted to. I'm just going to throw this in xclip. If you wanted to, you could, you could kind of copy all of it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and throw this to quipquip, which is a awesome tool, quipquip.com, that will essentially solve substitution ciphers, and it's kind of my go-to when I know it is a substitution cipher. So I'm just going to spit this in there, hit the solve button, let it, like, do its thing, run its course, do that voodoo magic, and we should eventually get some solution out of it. 
My internet connection is still crap. <laughs> Alright. It says, congrats, here is probably your flag. Substitution ciphers are solvable. Ha had no had no bones. I don't know what that last one may be. Hand bo boson? Let's get another string. We can go ahead and give it. That's kind of one of the neat things is that we're while well, we're getting a lot of these different uh, cipher text messages that we could use, and we could just keep using quip quip until we figure out something that kind of makes the flag format a little bit more understandable. It looks like it is just kind of giving us have to there it is. Congrats, here's your flag. Substitution ciphers are solvable, and then random letters following that. So good, we can just go ahead and submit that. Uh, wrap it in our flag our, our flag format. And we've got that one done as well. So perfect. Super, super cool. Quip Quip is an awesome tool and totally what you should just kind of use as your knee-jerk reaction and low-hanging fruit for substitution ciphers. It's definitely good to know. All right, it's everyone's favorite time of the video again, where I say the same thing in every single video. Thank you, Patreon supporters. You're the best. <laughs> Hey, $1 a month on Patreon is going to make my life so much better. Let me tell you that. It, it It's incredible. $1 a month on Patreon will give you a special shout-out just like this at the end of every video. Uh, if you like to see your name up in lights or kind of visible just at the end of each video, this is a cool way to do it. It's a cool way to make yourself feel like a good person helping out a dude who's really poor and just kind of has a shitty life right now. <laughs> but I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But I... I do appreciate and I'm grateful for whatever you guys are willing to help and support uh, the channel with. $5 a month on Patreon will give you early access to everything that I release on YouTube before it goes live. Uh, because I try to record videos kind of in bulk and get them ready to be released later on and let YouTube gradually release them kind of on a schedule. But uh, I need to get better at that. <laughs> so, hey, don't tell anyone. If you would like content right away, right when it's ready, right when it's hot and fresh out of the oven, that's the best way to do that. Just $5 a month on Patreon. And it helps me. I appreciate it. It shows that you love. Thanks. If you did like this video, guys, please do like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me grow, the channel grow, the YouTube algorithm magic. Uh, com Whoa. I was going to say something. A supportive... supportive uh, I gotta stop. <laughs> I'm running out of words again. I gotta end this video. Thanks, guys. Join our Discord server. Link in the description.